Hi, this is Henning from Flip Normals, and in today's video, we are going to show you a really cool tip for speeding up your work when it comes to texturing characters. We are going to be using Smart Masks, which is a very powerful tool when it comes to quickly changing things in your model, quickly blocking out your model, and quickly making additional maps like the Spec R and Subsurface Amount. Now, before we get into the tutorial, I want to talk to you about character face texturing in Substance Painter. This is a course where you learn how to make this character from scratch in terms of the textures. For Max bringing out the mesh from ZBrush to creating every single map in Painter to exporting all the maps into Arnold for Maya, which you can also do in Blender and all, all other software. And then we have a nice final result at the end. Also, the model we use in this video, and same for the course as well, is made by Nyasi. There's a link to his portfolio in the video description. His work is fantastic, so I highly recommend that you check that out. Now in Painter, I'll show you how to set up a smart mask. Now, if you already know how to set up smart masks, don't skip out on the video yet, because I'm going to show you how to use the smart masks, which is much more important than just how to technically set them up. So the way we're going to be making a smart mask is we're going to be making a new fill layer. We're going to be grouping this, and we're just going to call this smart masks. And then we're going to put this in here and we're going to call this base. And then we're going to make another layer, just duplicate this one. And uh, the only thing we really want here is color. So we can just uh, all click on the color. We're going to make this nice and red. Basically, we just want a nice saturated color. Then we just click this away. So that's fine. And then we're going to call this red. I, I prefer to name my things very early on. Then we're going to right click on this uh, red layer and then we're going to go to add black mask and now this is where you can paint and whatever you paint is now going to be red. So we are going to be adding a paint layer and then this is where you can just paint in the red. And the gist of this is that we're going to be creating a lot of these ones, a lot of these masks. We're going to be saving them out as smart masks and now we can keep reusing these masks over and over again. So we are going to be starting off by just making a mask for the general eye area and this is going to be quite soft and nice and it's really important that you have something like a um, like a saturated color whenever you make this mask because honestly it's going to be hard to see them otherwise like you want to be sure that it's a completely clean mask the brush i'm using is just a standard soft brush but then i set the pen pressure to be on the flow and not on the size because i have more control this way so meaning i have more control over the softness this way and then we just go down here all the way to the bottom. And here you can see if we were to uh, to change this from black to white by hitting the X key, we can now just paint in and we can remove stuff as well. So that's the gist of this. Once you painted your mask, you want to hit the Alt key, or hold on the Alt key and click on the mask. So now you can see exactly what's actually going on. Uh, because this way you can ensure that you get nice and clean masks. It's really hard to see this properly whenever you are working with um, just a material view. It can also be easy to miss certain areas. In this case, it's inside the eye. So this is not a huge concern. But um, yeah, this is how I do it. So then I'm going to rename this paint layer to Eye Soft. And then we are going to right click on the layer and then we're going to go to create smart mask. And then you can see this is going to pop up here. Now it's important you have to be under the uh, under the smart mask uh, tab here. I filter by that, right click, and then we just going to call this, I'm going to call this CHR first, just so we can search for character. And then we're going to call this I soft. And what's cool about this now is that now if we were to delete this, now we can very easily get this back just by searching CHR and just drag this in here. And now you can see we have the same mask. So we are just gonna create a few of these, which is going to really, really speed up your texturing. So we are just going to use this one as a base. So uh, just make sure you are on the, um, the actual layer and you're not on like in the, uh, like on the mask itself. So we can just create one for the, uh, the eyelids. So it, I think it's important to reuse as much as you can. So like this, we're gonna keep this a bit, a bit quicker for now, but just make sure, here you go, you can see that there is an issue with this. So we just wanna make sure that this is nice and soft. Cool. And then we're gonna call this eye eyelids. Then we'll do the same thing as before. So now we just go in and we just do, actually there's a little bit of a discrepancy here. So we just go in, make sure that this is set. So then we right click on the layer and then we do 
create smart masks. Do the same thing as before, and we just do chr. Uh, we do eyelids. Then we do the same again, and I'm just gonna create like one more for the for the mouth, and then you can make your own one. Or I'm just gonna be doing it behind the scenes because this is just the same thing over and over and over again. There's really nothing fancy about this. It's very simple once you get this workflow. Now the reason this works particularly well for characters versus hard surface, now it does work well for hard surface as well, but particularly the reason this works for characters is that for characters, you basically work within like this region here most of the time, right? You usually work within the, um, the eyes, nose, mouth, ears, and you know, the surrounding area. And that's what you do most of the time. While on props, you work a bit more all, all, all over the place and you don't just keep repainting the same areas as much as you do with characters. So it's really powerful to, to use this with characters, but of course you're more than welcome to use this for props as well or hard surface. So we're gonna call this mouth. Then we're gonna right click. We're gonna set this to, you guessed it, create smart mask. And then same thing, CHR mouth. So the advantage we have with this is that we can very easily start to block in the characters. And I'm going to show you the the procedure for this in a second. But for now, I'm just going to skip a little bit ahead. I'm going to make a few smart masks myself. All right, cool. So I've now deleted the overall smart mask group and I've made a few of these. So we have the eyelids, eyelids, uh, uh, the eyelid, the eyes sharp, the eyes soft. We have horns, ears, mouth, nose. So essentially we have things for uh, for this region. So we have for this, we have for this, uh, we have for the lips, we have for the ears, we have for the horns. Uh, and what you might want to do as well for characters like this is like for the scars as well, we haven't done that. And you also sometimes want for like the overall T zone here as well. So you have a bit more control of the spec there as well. And you probably also want these things, but we haven't done that for now. So I'm gonna show you how you can use these masks to quickly block in uh, first, just a color map of your character. So under color, we have a few different uh, fill layers already. We have the red, which is just, there's nothing in here because the mask isn't there. So uh, if we just were to kill the mask, then it's gonna look like this. So what we can do for this is we can make a eye soft. We can just put this under here. And now you can see we instantly have the, um, the color for this. We can do the same thing for the mouth as well. Now we're gonna have instant lips as well do the same thing for the nose. And you can just see how quick this is to, to block this in. And of course we can change the opacity of these as well. So really useful stuff. So if you want, for instance, to have horns that are darker, you can easily do that. You can go over here and you can just drag the horns in. And I can see that we have horns that are darker right away. If you want, um, for whatever reason you want, uh, ears that are like, more towards green, a bit desaturated, darker, because it's more of a fantasy character. We can go in here, we can do the same thing with the uh, ears as well, just drag this in, and there you go. And the cool thing about this approach is that you can very easily change this up. So, oh, you don't want green, that doesn't work super well. Well, we can just color pick something else, and then we can easily just change this up, and then we have it. So again, another advantage of this is that these masks are not actually live. So if we want to um, change, for instance, where the, the nose goes, or let's say we want the uh, the uh, the eyes. So currently we have a, uh, a mask for the eyes, but if we update this one, it's not going to update here, which is great, because this means we can use this as a starting point. We can blend this in, for instance, or we can extend this up like so. So it's a very quick way of blocking things in like so. And I use this for all my characters essentially. So that's it, how we can use this for the color map. Now, where this is really useful as well is for, if we want to do something for the specular map, for instance. So let's go into our roughness. So now we can just make a, um, a roughness or new filler and we can call this mouth. And then we can just alt click on roughness and we can make this quite, quite a smooth, uh, quite a smooth roughness value. And then we just go in here and we just go in and we go boom, mouth. And I can see we have instant roughness map or a mask for the mouth. We can do the same thing, or you can just like duplicate this one. We can call this eyes and we can just delete what we have. 
And then we can just set this to be even an even lower value. We want the eyes to be super sharp, for instance, or maybe a little bit, bit higher up. Then we can do eyes uh, soft. And we just drag this in and boom, we now have this. But then we want the eyes, the actual um, like shelf here to be even uh, to be even harsher. Then we can go in here and we can make this be even darker like so. So we can go in and we can do eye sharp, drag this in and there you go. You can see that now if we were to go in and check our spec map, you can see that we can now go in and we can really just play around with this. Maybe the, the specular value for this is, uh, is too sharp. So we can just go in and we can just quickly change this up. And you can see how fast this actually is. Obviously you still have to work on the color map and on the spec map and such, but it just means that you can very quickly get a base. Another one you can use is the uh, subsurface amount as well. Because we're going to keep seeing that we're going to use the same things over and over again. So just hit the C key a few times until we get to the scattering channel. If you don't have a scattering channel, you just have to go to the texture sets and then go to channels. And then we just have to go to uh, channel unsupported by shader. And then we just have to get scattering in here. So then we have scattering. So we have a base value for the scattering. But what if we want this to be a different value? What if we want the eyes to be... Uh, well, let's say we take this down. So we want this to be like quite, kind of nice and neutral, but we want the ears to be really, really shiny. Or oh, sorry, really, really absorbing a lot of um, of subsurface. Then we go in here and we just go boom. And then we have this for the ears. Do the same thing. We can just duplicate this one and delete the layer we have. And we can, let's say we want the mouth to be to be uh, subsurfacey, but not that much. We just go in and go boom, mouth. Do the same thing for the um, for the eyes as well because you want them to be a little bit specky or sorry a little bit um, uh, subsurfacey and there you go you can just see how you can very quickly create this now this is not connected to anything but at least it, the point is here and then of course we want the uh, the horns to not have any scattering whatsoever because they're horns then we just go in and we just go boom and now we have horns that have basically any, nothing on it so this is a bit of a different approach to how, how you might normally do it. A normal approach might be to just go, well, I want horns to be darker. So I'm just going to go in. I'm just going to paint this kind of stuff in. So, you know, just going to start to straight up paint it in. That was in color. We need to make sure this isn't scattering. So you just go in and you just paint this. The problem is you can't really change the value of this. You can't really quickly block it out either. You can't really, well, you can't erase it with the eraser brush, but it's much, much better to do these kind of maps with fill layers and um, using the smart mask. So this has so much potential. So before you start any character, I highly recommend that you go in and you cr spend like half an hour or so. That's about how much time it takes to create these masks from scratch because uh, I've timed that for more tutorials. So just spend a lot of time doing that. And if you find yourself painting something, let's say you, we are in the color and we realize that um, we keep doing the same thing over and over again. Let's just put it here. And we, we keep doing the same thing. So let's say we want to have some darkness and the, the scars and we just make a black mask and we do this, we add a paint layer and we keep doing this over and over again because we just now want some values in this. Well, what you should then do is you should just do the same thing. You should just take what you keep painting all the time, then right click on it and then just turn this into a smart mask and you can find it all here. If you want to delete the smart mask, you simply just right click on it and then you delete. Now, if you, for, for whatever reason you can't find this, like you, you, don't, you can't delete it through here, you can just search through your Windows machine to smart mask or to the name of this and you're going to find the file and it's going to be under your assets and smart masks under your painter directory. So then you can just delete it from there as well. Another thing you can do with this as well is if you want to grade the, um, the textures for whatever reason, let's say you have a height map and um, we have a height map that looks like so but we want to reduce the intensity of this. This is actually what I'm doing with the height balance here. So let's make another layer and we just set this to height. Click the, uh, just click the uh, Alt key while clicking on it. Then we change the blending mode to height so we can actually adjust this. Then we just set this to normal. And now you can see there's nothing here. So if we go to the material view, there's nothing. So uh, this is a good way to do it, to balance things out. So now what we can do, let's say we want the, um, the eyes to be, um, to be less intense when it comes to the amount of uh, bump there is. We can just set this to be like balance, eyes, and then we can just drag in the eyes soft for this. 
And I can see this is now excluding everything but the eyes. The important thing is that you do set this to normal and then you can just set the opacity just a little bit down. So this is a great way to balance things out. You can do the same thing with the, uh, the nose as well. If you want this to be a little bit less intense. What you can also do, you can just set this to max and then we can just change the amount here as well. Just so we have finer control over this. So yeah, that's this is a good way of doing it. Uh, you can do this exactly the same thing if we were to use go to color as well and we want to change uh, something like an adjustment layer or we want to change the amount of something. We want to change the saturation in a certain area. Then we can just make a, um, a regular paint layer. And then in here, we can add levels to this. And then we just set this to uh, to pass through, just in color, and we just go under here and we just set this to pass through. Now you should be able to change the the grading of this. So we want the whole thing to, well, now we make the whole thing darker and then we just go in and call this grade. And then we can go in and we can just change this to be eyes soft. And now you guessed it, this is only going to grade down this one. So tremendously powerful when it comes to uh, to doing like particularly characters it's useful for all sorts of texture but particularly for characters this is really really handy so that's it for this video if you did enjoy this video i really recommend our course face texturing in substance painter which covers a lot of the same concepts where we also cover how to do the whole thing including how to do the 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 normal map you can see or doing all the pores and then we take all the maps into into arnold and we render them out there but again if you are using another software than than maya and arnold these maps are going to work perfectly fine so yeah thank you so much for watching if you did enjoy this let us know in the comments and make sure to like comment and subscribe and hit the little notification bell to get updated every single time we come out with a new video